my name's Dave Lanham and I work for Eurofins Pharma Bioanalysis based in Oxford in the UK. Um, there I work with flow cytometry in clinical drug development and uh, supporting clinical drug development pr uh, programs. I've worked with flow cytometry for about 20 years and I started off in preclinical toxicology and immunology. So we use flow cytometry for a number of different things. Predominantly it's used in pharmacodynamic biomarker analysis within the drug development program, but we also use it for receptor engagement and target, uh, target engagement receptor occupancy assays, which are cell-based assays, and they, they complement the PK and uh, pharmacodynamic endpoint changes. So it's, uh, it's a very powerful tool and we use it predominantly in uh, early clinical stage work. So flow cytometry is a really powerful and exciting technology. Uh, it uses fluorescent dyes to generate multi-parameter uh, analysis on cells. And you can look at uh, the frequencies, you can look at the expression levels of proteins, you can look both inside and outside the cell, you can look at the developmental stage and the activation status of a cell and you can multiplex the, the data so you can get quite high levels of information on very large numbers of cells. So flow cytometry has developed at a very fast rate and is still developing very quickly. And what that means is that there's a tension between routine and regulated bioanalysis and cutting edge science. And that tension can actually uh, cause problems both in interpretation of the data but also when you're submitting it in a, a formal regulated environment. Uh, it does require that the users of the technology are both technically and scientifically uh, ex experienced. So until very recently flow cytometry really didn't have formal regulation in, in any context outside of the clinical diagnostic space. However there's been some recent uh, industry-led white paper guidance which has led the way for a new and up-and-coming guidance by the CLSI which is due to be published in May of this year 2019 where we are hoping it will guide and offer uh, a path for people using this technology in a regulated environment. I see flow cytometry is continuing to develop at a very rapid rate and one of the challenges there is that the data that is being generated is becoming even more complex and so I think uh, the next generation of changes will be looking at some forms of automation and computer assisted gating and I think there will also be some significant changes in the way the technology processes the data uh, which will improve both the quality and actually the ability to regulate the data.